Welcome to Familiar Territory, an anime podcast hosted by two white dudes who've been friends for over 15 years. Here we talk about the history and influence of anime, as well as review anime new and old. So grab your talking cap and transform into some comfy clothes as we step into a familiar territory. My name is Grant. And I'm Brantley. Heads up, spoilers on the way. Check the description. See if you're safe to listen. Hey, Brantley. What's up? Uh, you ever play Dungeons and Dragons and you're making a character and you want them to be the most apathetic piece of shit of all time and you also want to start the game as a level 20 wizard never not once in my life I don't touch that nerd shit (laughs) well that's literally all Elena fucking is god damn did this show piss me off yeah um so bit of context uh we finished uh Journey of Elena, Wondering Witch, Majo no Tabi Tabi, whichever you know name you're running by, um, and ooh, we we changed our minds from our first thoughts. Uh, we did originally review this episodes one through six uh, as it was airing, and so it finished now, and uh, boy, it finished us. <laughs> so, um, I am gonna say. We are going to talk about this strictly as the anime. I know that this is a light novel adaptation. I've already seen kind of here and there mentions of like, well, in the light novel, it was better because this. It was, sorry, I, I don't care if the light novel did it one way or another. We're going to look at this as an anime and we're still going to blame the writer for everything that happened. So, yay! <laughs> um, so when we talked about the first, uh, the, the first six episodes, one of the things we talked about how is we were worried Elena was not going to ever have any other emotion other than I am the best and I am beautiful. And don't worry, she has a couple other emotions, which are uh, I'm too beautiful and fuck everyone who disagrees with me. She is insufferable as a protagonist. I know a lot of people were like, oh, I'm so glad to have a neutral protagonist. It's so interesting seeing someone who doesn't take sides. Except that's so fucking boring and she does take sides that's the thing she does take sides when it impacts her that's not neutral that's selfish that's evil right (laughs) she's a terrible person and because she's a terrible person there is literally no character for her Mm -hmm. i i definitely agree with you i think i want to help frame this in some different words uh i'm but angry. should we <laughs> i get you <laughs> I, I i i will i will let anybody who's listening to this know i'm pissed at this show um because this this so a little a little anime history backstory on grant uh one of the first anime i ever watched was sword art online i was a 15 year old boy and i was like oh boy sword anime um and it was the first time that I watched something, and as it got on, it got progressively worse and worse. And I'm like, wow, did I really just watch that go down the drain? Um, and I feel that again. You know, it's kind of a nostalgic sense of anger and frustration. Mm-hmm. Sometimes getting angry feels good. Oh, I'm constantly angry, but now I'm, <laughs> I can channel it at something. Mm-hmm. A podcast. <laughs> Yeah. Um so frame it how you want to frame it before okay. we continue talking about it. So I do want to discuss Elena's character a little more and then if we need to we can do like a plot synopsis but um I think this already just kicks into review territory because we won't be able to talk about the chronology of the show without critiquing it cuz we had a huge issue with how it plays itself out. Um so consider this kind of like introduction is done. We're already in the review. Um, I don't think it's just that Elena is a a selfish character that makes us upset. I do think that there is execution involved that could make her a plenty enjoyable protagonist, despite the fact that she's very much driven by self-interest and has this, like, vain side of herself. Um, so, to cover our asses, uh, I you know, there are characters, I think, that do this kind of thing, but, you know, accomplish this. And In fact, from shows that we've already uh, covered a bit on this podcast. So, one of them uh, that I really like and one that Grant really likes that I, I can come up with off the top of my head... Um, 
uh, on my end here, uh, Utena Tenjo from Revolutionary Girl Utena. Uh, she is t- super confident, extremely good at what she does. Uh, she's clever, brave, strong, uh, strong-willed. Um, having seen that series, she does some changing along the way, but for the most part, she is a rock. Like, she is kind of the... the 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 foundation of like that plot that progresses she's the one who comes in and says hey uh this whole rose bride thing is fucked up you should cut that out and then you know defends that opinion basically through the entire show um and although she does some you know some growing up and reacting and uh whatnot uh for the most part like her moral compass is steady and it's precise uh, even if it's not always accurate, uh, she's always like pointed in the same direction. It doesn't waver much, um, and I think that helps. Uh, you know, I haven't seen the series in a while, but I, it's not the kind of thing where she has this very deliberate arc. You know that she's learning the very specific thing. Um, you know, this is not like Princess Tutu, where you can see, like, all right, her goal is to go from not being graceful to being graceful. Uh, Utena's not like that. But she's still enjoyable to watch, because along the way, her moral compass is, you know, pretty agreeable. There's nothing inconsistent about it that would likely throw you off. Um, or if it does, then maybe you'll learn a little bit from Utena along the way. So, again, I think you can do this kind of character. It's just that I don't think Elena was pleasant to watch. Now, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Um, Another character I thought of, a similar sort of, like, um, build to to Elena uh, is Iwanaga Kotoko from uh, Inspector, another show we watched recently and one that Grant likes a lot. Do you want to give a crack at why she is a you know a more enjoyable character to watch than Elena despite having some of the same chemistry. So I think I think the problem with Elena is not necessarily Elena herself, although I don't think she helps it, but it's the the entire tone of the show, right? Mm-hmm. So like an inspector, right? Um Kotoko is like, "Oh uh, yeah, I really only care about spirits and how things affect spirits." And like while there's goofy shit that happens in the show, it's never like, haha, let's take a 30 minute episode to talk about feet. Um, oh, so you never feel you never feel like the the tone is inconsistent. And so like she she also doesn't go out of her way to like be a dick to someone and she like tries to help people even if it is a little inconvenient for her with her main focus being the spirits, right? So she's like, oh yeah. I'll help the police who got murdered, but it's because it's a spirit thing. It's my problem, but I'm there to help. You know, she's she is arrogant and she is full of herself, but because she's consistent with herself and the tone of the show is consistent, it feels like a better written character. Mm-hmm. Now, Wandering Witch does take about 15 minutes to focus on feet. Like, that's a thing. <laughs> that's not me, like, making a stupid joke. That's a thing that happens in this show. It is. And it's supposed to be a feel-good episode, but it, it it's a nothing episode. And I think I think that's the problem with this show is that there are so many nothing episodes that are scattered in between episodes of just absolute despair and cynicism. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's weird because I don't know what the like the net gain of this show is supposed to be. Um, and I guess you could reflect that on the light novel too. But again, we didn't read that. Um, it's like normally you have you you want to have a reason for indulging in media. So it's like you know I learned something from this. Like it had a good message, or it looked really pretty, or um, you know I am inspired by what's being said, or. Um, just even like, this is unique to me, you know, novelty is powerful. Sure. This show is inconsistent enough that I don't know what the point was. Like it's, it, it doesn't like to make like these like moral judgments all the time, only some of the time, you know, we're not going to comment on someone's slave girl, but we are going to comment on the person who's making dolls out of people's hair. 
okay. Um, you know, the characters aren't necessarily particularly strong either. As we mentioned, Elena doesn't grow from episode to episode because it is episodic. Um, you know, she might as well be a, a start from zero character every episode she has past episode one. Um, and the other characters are pretty flat and tropey. Like even, you know, Fran, who I really like uh, to watch, you know, on screen, you know, she she's pretty one note. Uh, in fact, like to the point where when they show her in the past, it doesn't even feel like her. Um, and so it's like, you know, what was the point? Production's good. The, you know, the the show looks pretty nice. There's uh, some pretty good. There's some pretty good shit in the show that I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Uh, yeah. Especially in the first episode. Yeah. Uh, but then after that, it's it kind of loses its its originality and it loses its, its like homeliness too. Because uh, I think you could go either way. You could make it very comfortable. A uh, little which Academia pulls that off, where it's like, eh, this is st- stuff you're familiar with, right? We don't have to explain, you know, a, a dragon to you. We don't have to explain, you know, a magic wand. We're just going to kind of use cultural shorthand. Um, and so it's a very comfy show. You know, then there are other shows that are like, you know, we're going to tip this on its head and everything is a new concept. Um, you know, this happens in... We watched something that's like they constantly traded every oh uh, burn the witch, burn the witch is the kind of thing where it's like you know oh this isn't a magic barrier this is a cloth you know that's what we call this uh, you're not a, a witch you're a piper you know etc um, you know you can swing that way too you can go full novelty and Elena doesn't do either one yeah it it's it tries to be like oh witches witches exist but what is a witch. It's a person who does magic. But what's that different from a mage? Oh, they're accredited. What does the accreditation matter? It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, Besides they, maybe they, you might get assigned tasks or whatever, that's it. You know? Yeah, like they talk big about it in the first one about Elena becoming a witch. And she's like, I need to be a witch. I need someone to tell me that I'm a witch, right? Um, and then when she becomes a witch, she doesn't do anything that a witch does. We see that witches are called in to do helpful shit. Mm-hmm. But Elena specifically doesn't do helpful shit. So why did she care about being an accredited witch if she couldn't do helpful shit? Because she wanted to be called a witch. Now, once again, if that got put into use, then more than just Elena going, oh, I'm a witch, I can do whatever the fuck I want, it would have been fine. But it doesn't. And um, the only thing that it has is that Elena feels that she needs to help witches more than regular people. Because whenever a witch is in need, Elena will help them. Whenever a regular person's in need... Elena will not. Now, this would be fine if Elena, like, had a superiority complex outside of just thinking of herself but thinking of witches as better beings, but she really doesn't. She has emotions. She knows when people are being shitty, but for some reason, if it doesn't have to do with witch, it's a surface-level talk. Um, And it's bad. You There are times when you want to like Elena and her overconfidence, like... I think episode two is probably one of the better episodes as well because you get to see Elena be a little overconfident. You get to see her kind of be goofy and be really like proud of herself. But she's also helping Saya throughout the entire thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, look, she has this this use. She has this this worth. But like other than that, she's rarely... She does that again in episode five, which is also one of the better episodes of the series. Um in fact, I would say I would say episode five is the last good episode, mm-hmm. um, because that's that's where it kind of starts to fall off and get really really unfocused. <laughs> so we finished on episode six when we did our preview, and episode six is the land of the truth tellers, where she re- reunites with Saya, and she comes to an island where everyone has to tell the truth. And it's a fine episode. It's kind of cheesy. It's not really exciting. Um, and Saya is a psychotic lesbian, essentially, who just only focuses on Elena. And it's really gross mm-hmm. and a very bad portrayal of her character. Yeah, put that um, up on the on tack that up on the uh, billboard for weird, horny, fetishy things in this show. Yeah. So, so like. Even in like, even in episode two, Saya seemed to have a crush on Elena, but it wasn't nearly as like aggressive. Mm-hmm. 
it and, held back a little bit. And so it was like, okay, I can see this being like a crush. But then by the time she gets reintroduced, it is full blown obsession. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like l- let's 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 just go through the episodes we watch. So episode seven is the grape stomping girl, which Elena gets drunk and stomps on grapes with her feet, and that makes people want to buy the wine because people apparently in this entire area have a foot fetish. And, like, it's not implied. It's just basically stated that, yeah, if you have a cute girl stomp your grapes, people will buy it. Um, the the ending isn't fun. Like, apparently the grape stomping girl marries the mayor from the other town. It's not exciting. There's nothing at stake. Um, it's not even funny. Mm-hmm. It's just horny. Yeah, the whole mystery of the episode is, hey, how come we have this festival activity where we all throw grapes at each other? And the twist is that Elena came to town, um, everyone was fighting about wine production, and so she got drunk off of, like, what, like, one glass of wine? Yeah. And then she started pelting everybody in sight with grapes, uh, using her magic, and just kind of terrorized them. And then they all woke up from that and thought, hey, that was fun, I guess, we'll just do that more. And, and like, uh, events like that happen in the real world. There's actual, like, orange fights in some place in Europe, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, Greece has a fireworks fight where they try and shoot the bell uh, on the other side of a river. Sure. Like, this stuff exists. But it's not needed in a 12-episode show. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially because- considering, like... Like, again, like, the the A to B of this is that Elena comes to town and she accidentally creates a tradition. But in between that is just, like, foot fetish jokes and, like, the the very slow play out of realizing, like, oh, it's not actually – she's not actually stomping the grapes. She's getting other men to stomp the grapes. And it's like, okay – I kind of I thought that was happening anyways. Like I just might just mentally like assumed that would have been happening. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, it, it's 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 a waste of an episode. Um, there is a good Elena gift where she's like dancing in a seat. But that's the only positive that comes from this episode. Um, mm-hmm. the next episode is bad. Oh, hold on, sorry. I want to sneak something in. Um, as you were describing that plot. I zoned out for a moment, and when I zoned back in, I realized that it sounds like if you remove the character names, it sounds like a Konosuba episode. It does. It really does. Which can it, you compare, like when you look at episode one of Elena, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> you don't drift yeah. that far off. You just don't. You, you don't. It, it's it's a wildly different show than episode one, than episode two, than episode three, than episode four. Like it's it's weird because. Episodes six and seven are like, haha, fun, wacky villages with weird cultural un- things. How is Elena going to navigate this? Um, which isn't useful in a show that is episodic, right? Yeah. So, like, One Piece would do it, but you would spend multiple episodes in this town. So, it's not just like a one and done thing. It would be like, how do the Straw Hat Pirates adapt to this wacky situation? And while it can be wacky and overbearing, it at least makes sense in terms of why they're focusing on it. Mm-hmm. And the wackiness is consistent. <laughs> Here, the emotional factor is all over the place. It's, it, yeah, One Piece is wacky. Yeah. The, the episodic nature feels like an excuse. They're mm-hmm. like, well, you're going to different towns, so anything could happen. But the problem is, is that Elena is still the emotional mirror for the audience. And so when you're going from, say, episode 10 to episode 11, it's it's totally jarring to see that it didn't stick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that there is no actual meaningful change going on. These might as well be you know, a different witch every episode. It might as well not be Mm -hmm. Elena. Right. Because the next episode is The Ripper, which introduces uh, Sheila, who is Saya's witch master and also Fran's friend when they were apprentices together. And her and uh, Elena have to find out someone who's cutting hair and putting them on dolls. And that's a big deal. It's a hair fetish episode. Like, once again, these jokes aren't subtle. It is straight up, like, people will be like, I love your hair. I want to touch your hair. And it's, like, very weird. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then by the time they capture the Ripper, the girl who's k- taking all this doll and putting on the hair, Elena's pissed and like is out for blood, which is mm-hmm. super weird because we saw in episode three that she, even if she has a problem with someone, like she didn't like the guy had a slave girl, she won't do anything. Like that, that was established in episode three. It's like, hey, here's a problem. But you can't solve it because then you would you wouldn't be neutral. But in this one, she's like, we have to kill her. We have to bring her to justice. And it's so wild. And the only difference is that this is affecting Elena. But it's not like Elena likes slavery. We saw that she was upset with it, so it was against her moral code. Mm-hmm. It's so weird where she draws the line. I'm going to do something, and I'm not going to do something. Mm-hmm. And it's frustratingly boring of an episode. Because there's no stakes. It's hair, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just She literally grows it back onto herself with magic. Like, (laughs) Right. She loses her hair, and she freaks out, and then she gets it back. And it's so lame, and it's so stupid, and it has no relevance. The only thing that this episode brings to the table is Sheila. Mm -hmm. But apparently it was supposed to be a very traumatic experience for Elena, because later we find out that... If she wasn't who she was, it would have been. But we're not there yet. No, no. We have to get to episode nine, which is basically my at first edgy anime. Mm -hmm. She goes back in time to stop a murderer from becoming a murderer. With someone else, yes. With with another witch. And so it's like, hey, if we can stop her parents from getting murdered, she won't be a murderer. And they're like, let's do it. And it turns out the little girl was the murderer and they don't portray the mental illness in a way that's like great they're like she she, because the little girl is being abused by her family and so it's like i killed them because they were abusing me but instead of it being like okay let's get you help or hey you don't need to be fret anymore they're like no she's just straight up a murderer because she immediately tries to murder everybody else including her best friend who's now, who's she's like, oh, that's my best friend from the future. Just kidding. I don't have any friends. And she's laughing all this time while she's just getting absolutely obliterated by magic. Mm-hmm. And then they cut her head off. It's incredibly, it's, it's laughably over the top violence and a goofy show. Mm-hmm. And it it's bad. There, you don't feel any emotional weight because these characters have been introduced for like 15 minutes. So you're not like, oh, that's what happened. You're like, oh, okay. And at the end of it, Elena cries and she feels heavy and she feels bad. And me and Brantley were like, oh my goodness, is she actually going to carry this into the next episode? No. Well, she killed a child. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best. She doesn't. She cries at the end of this episode, and the weight does not transfer over. And the next episode is probably one of the most boring episodes of this show. And I thought it would be exciting because it's about Fran and Sheila. Mm-hmm. And I I remember very little about it. I just remember watching the magic fights, and they were very lame. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, it was in like a sort of a town centric arms race between uh, the witches of the town and people who were developing and using magic weapons um or or you know obtaining magic weapons one way or another and so it's like all right uh crime crime is occurring with magic weapons witches are opposing it magic weapons are kind of in use despite the presence of magic users in the first place since they you know hold power over those people so what ends up happening is that fran and sheila get put on the case uh they get themselves caught and then clear out an entire room of people uh who whose magic weapons the very little of which actually got used um end up doing basically nothing to their witch magic uh because they are you know uh pretty strong witches and they just clear everything out and it's all done uh it, it's very boring and the yeah. only the only thing it brings to the table is that Fran's teacher was the witch that Elena looked up to what mm. What? How? Whoa! It's it's stupid. Yeah. And what's what sucks about it is it shows that the writer has an idea for something that's good, right? 
an arms race between people who are trying to meet up with witches, meet the, you know, hey, these witches are magical mm -hmm. and they actually have some pretty powerful stuff. What if we can make weapons so that if they ever need to be, if they ever go evil, we can fight them? You know, it could have been a full series. Mm -hmm. But it's it's covered in that episode. And then the next episode is about Saya and Elena basically doing the same thing because it's in the same town with the same gang with the same magic weapons. But the twist is, is that they swap bodies and everyone falls in love with everybody. So not only do you have a body swap episode to the second to the last episode, and once again, not two episodes, well, two episodes ago, we saw child murder. Mm -hmm. You now have this weirdly horny episode with incest, by the way, because yep. Saya's sister is there and she is in love with Saya because of a magic potion. But this Saya is actually Elena, who's switched bodies. And it ends with Fran telling Elena that she has people that care about her and love her. Which is weird because Elena doesn't need that. Because she already loves herself so much that she mentions how beautiful she is almost every episode. Mm-hmm. It's bad. It doesn't make sense. Now, if Elena was still struggling with watching child murder, or maybe if she actually gave more than two thoughts on a slave girl and was actually struggling mentally, then maybe it would have made sense in terms of storytelling. But outside of that, it doesn't. Which brings us to our last episode, where we learn that the author had a better premise in a side character. So <laughs> Elena is in a group with all the other different types of Elena. You have protagonist Elena, which is the main Elena, smart Elena, money-hungry Elena, but also greedy Elena. Like, same exact character. There's yeah, 16 there's of them, friends. and most of them are just the same character. Three of them are, like, depressed or, like, um, like fear-ridden or, you know, like, essentially in despair. And then all three of them are just equally hiding under the table. Great. You Glad have, you chose 16 well, instead of, you know, just slimming that down. You could have picked any number. You could have. Yeah. You had horny Elena, and you also had horny Elena who wanted to pretend she had big boobs. Once again, three episodes ago, child murder. Yeah. Like. Graphic, bloody child murder. Graphic, way, bloody for those child murder. They did a murder. They did a murder, and then they pretend that the murder didn't happen. And then you meet who arguably should have been the main character, who they call Violent Elena, who hates everything that Elena is, who actually feels, like, at fault for the child murder, who actually has, like, emotions outside of I'm the best. Because essentially what happened, according to this, is Violent Elena witnessed child murder first, and then witnessed all the other stuff. So she has short hair because she didn't really care to get it back. She has like all this like depressed feelings about her journey. And Elena's like, I did that too, but I'm okay. So why don't you be okay? And then they like sit in bed with each other. And like, it's weirdly like romantic. Um, Because they focus a lot on, like, holding hands, but it is Elena and Elena, which I guess is a great way to show how narcissistic she is. Mm -hmm. It's bad. It's supposed and to come off as, like, self-acceptance or, you know, that kind of thing, and it doesn't at all. Well, well it's one of those things, because it's like, <laughs> protagonist, yeah, protagonist Elena has already basically accepted that she's the greatest person in the world, and she has no regrets. Like, mm -hmm. she has no regrets and so it's violent Elena, the good Elena, is accepting who she is. But, like, we don't get to see her. She's not a main character. She's just a subset of the main character mm -hmm. who would have been way more interesting to follow. There are a million ways to write this show. There are a million ways to do this show right, and this show did none of it right. Mm -hmm. I do not know how this show has a 7.6 on my anime. Because, mm -hmm. like, if it had, like, a 6.5, I would understand, right? Like, yeah. people would be like, oh, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird and stupid at some times. But you know what? It's a solid show. I would get it. But a 7.6 is incredibly high. That's mm -hmm. higher than Zombieland Saga. That's higher than Raven. Is it higher than Ravu Starlight? Maybe. Check it out. It is almost exactly Ravu Starlight. It's high. It's, like, 
It's higher than decadence. Mm -hmm. It's it's weirdly liked. It's weirdly praised. And I don't know where this show can be praised besides the incredibly well done and executed first episode. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. It's <sighs> it, it's weird because this show feels like there's lots of ways they could have gotten around this. Um, if episode 12 didn't happen, you could argue that every instance of Elena going and doing a thing is separate from each other. In fact, you could almost use episode 12 to sink that nail and say, look, there's all these different versions of Elena. <coughs> oh, fuck, I'm coughing. <laughs> Don't laugh, you bitch. <laughs> oh, God, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so... Anyways, um, you could use episode 12 as a, as a way to say, like, um, hey, different Elenas are going to experience different things, and it's, you know, the way she is nurtured as a character is going to affect who she becomes. Um, and then you could say, yeah, and that's why each of these different Elenas has a different, you know, story ending point. Sometimes she chooses not to act. Sometimes she chooses to act. And it's inconsistent because we're actually seeing different Elenas. But then the show says, no, that's not it. Because guess what? <laughs> we're going to have protagonist Elena admit that she did see child murder. And she just got over it really quickly. And, Compared and to, we... you know, um, violent Elena, which I think is the funniest fucking name ever because it reminds <laughs> me of Violent Ken from Street Fighter. But <laughs> uh, And that was I... a dumb name, too. <laughs> but, like, like you had an out. <laughs> you did. You, know? it, it, you, you really did. And what's what's wild about this show is that the first episode's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> like... Like, it is one of... We watched the first episode, and we were like, oh my god, this show's gonna be great. Because it had self-acceptance, it had self-love, it had all this good stuff going for it. Even episode two, which is a little silly and a little goofy and a little horny, is not bad. Um, mm -hmm. and, and episode three, the one with the slave girl, was bad, but not because the episode itself was bad, but because it has no impact on the rest of the show this mm -hmm. show wanted to be dark and depressing so it brought in these dark and depressing episodes but because it doesn't expand on it it feels silly it's so wanton yeah and, and Brantley and i talked about this this show has all the building blocks to make a good show but it puts them out of order and since it doesn't reflect on them it doesn't make it a good show mm -hmm. i mean early on so let's let's say for example, the episode three happens and Elena, you know... Ep episode three, slave girl. Yes. So uh, episode three happens and she does not help the slave girl and she moves on feeling just kind of uncomfortable about it. Um, if that attitude were to stay consistent, then we'd still have a theme develop out of it. You know, hey, being a privileged person means you get to go around and kind of do whatever you want and you don't have to internalize things to make your way through. The people who like you will still like you. Your connections are still solid. You have a network. You have resources. You have, you know, a stable family. Um, and that's kind of bothersome to see from the outside to realize like, oh, wow, yeah, like if you've got privilege, you've you're set like you don't have to be a good person and that's shitty um but that's not used you know um what i'm trying to say is is that if they had consistency we at least could have formulated a thought out of this but instead we're just like running around in circles <laughs> it's like just like this chaos that we're trying to work our way through right now ah ah I think one of the ways that, they, like, you could have even the child murder, even though it's laughably dark and laughably stupid, mm -hmm. but if you had that after the slave episode, you could really throw into maybe Elena realizing that she has she has the power to interfere, and then you have, you, and then you have the episode where she meets Fran, and Fran's like, hey, Elena, it's okay to feel bad. You have people that love you, and that's okay, but none of it is explored, and it's such a wasted potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of all this, do you want to quickly hash out a better order of episodes? Yes. So it's going to get a little confusing in terms of vocals. So I'll try and keep it brief because I've done this. I've I've literally did this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I This is your stage right now. 
You need this. All right. Rape Stomping Girl, Foot Fetish episode, out. Make Bottled Happiness, the slave episode, the entire thing. The girl is pretty as a flower where she tricks people into taking flowers and getting poisoned. Useless. Terrible. Get it out of there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you can make the Ripper episode. Make it about actual murder. Don't make it about hair. Okay? There you go. So you start out with episode one where Elena learns, hey, it's all right to be you. It's great. Uh, Be self-love and self-independent. And then she takes that and she kind of goes with it. Keep episode two the same. She can meet Saya. She can become kind of like, whoa, this is kind of weird. And then episode three, make that the one where she goes to the School of Mages, which is episode five in the normal chronological. So you make episode five, episode three. She re-meets Fran. She sees how other people look at magic. She kind of understands how powerful she is, right? And so maybe she kind of does feel the sense of responsibility. Then make episode four the slave girl episode, right? So then she kind of feels like, how much power can I have when there is laws in place that prevent me from using this? Because we, we, I think slavery is legal in this country, right? Mm-hmm. But maybe Elena can kind of look at that and she goes, do I have the right to upset the balance? Then, fuck it. Make episode five child murder. Keep it. Keep child murder. I hate that episode. I think it's a terrible episode. But... <laughs> You can connect it with episode four, which is now the slave girl episode, in which Elena's like, oh shit, I feel bad. And have her actually reflect on her emotions. Make episode set make episode six the flashback with Fran and Sheila. So you introduce Sheila as Fran's friend, right? Mm-hmm. And then you bring in the Ripper episode with the hair, except you make it about murder. So there's an actual murder going on. So now Elena actually uses what she's reflected on. It was like, do I actually use my powers for good to help people? And then she does. And so you have her help Sheila take in this murderer, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have epis- you, you n- nicked the horny, uh, the horny body swap episode. You don't need it. But mm-hmm. you can have another episode in which her and Saya do something together. Land of Truth Tellers nicks it too. But have an episode dedicated to Saya and Elena solving an actual problem. Mm-hmm. Hell, you can keep the Land of Truth Tellers. Kind of make it a little lighthearted romp. Make it, you know, so that they understand. Because it happens. Land of Truth Tellers, Saya and Elena do help a place. Make it happen. And then when you have episode 12, you can have all the different Elenas. Cut it down. Cut out horny Elenas. Make it like five Elenas. Make it happy Elena, protagonist Elena, sad Elena, angry Elena, and then goofy Elena. I don't know. And then you can have this reflection of her character. And then you can also make it so that when Fran says, hey, Elena, you have people that love you, she can actually look at herself too. And then it all comes together because don't worry. Episode 12, as of now, ends with season two bait by introducing a new character in the last two minutes where Elena says, we're going to travel together. And it's wild that they did that. It's wild that they did that because, oh, that was one of the things that I'd also do. But if you if you have Elena travel by yourself, that's the order I would do it in. However, I think Elena should have traveled with Saya for most of the part. Take mm-hmm. out the aggressive, like, horniness that Saya has. And have her just be a little bit more down to earth. Mm-hmm. And that way, you can have this development where she can see someone who's not quite as privileged as she is. Where she can see someone who's not quite as naturally gifted as her. You know, and you can see her understand that she needs to not be such a narcissist. Mm-hmm. There's so much you can do with the show. And it's yeah. so sad that it just did not stick the landing ever. Mm-hmm. Except episode one. Yep. And you could even take all, all all of what Grant said. You you just take out the modifications and just stick with the rearranged order. I still think this show works better because it has a flow remaining. Like, yeah, if you must, you keep the goofy episodes and you front load them. You know, the you keep the the weird fetish episodes and just front load them. And at the very least, then you have this like more cohesive emotional curve to it it's jarring to me that they actually produced this in this order and you know in in the same way as elena didn't intervene right like they didn't they didn't like say like okay we're not gonna do this this way you know i i by the way i get it like obviously 
that's difficult to do and you would burn bridges that way um but that's my wishful thinking i'm gonna burn all the fucking bridges if you <laughs> like this show fight me oh you send me your place of residence i will fight you just kidding <laughs> You have your right to your opinion. And I can see why people like this show. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, this show's terrible. It's mm-hmm. uh, irredeemable. Personally, it is one of my least favorite shows I've seen, but only because it disappointed me heavily. Mm-hmm. I think I've definitely seen worse shows in terms of everything, but this show crushed me in terms of, like, hope. It's like when you come home and you think that you have, like, leftover food but someone ate it or it's bad and then you can't have it. And like, it's worse than not having it at all Yeah, because you thought that you got that sick ass chicken sandwich and then you don't. Mm -hmm. Oops. It's, it's just incredibly disappointing. And that is why I'm so angry at it. And like, it has good things about it. The character designs are great. I think the, even like the side characters look fun. There's these wizards that are traveling around lifting dumbbells and they're just like off in the side and they're funny and they're goofy and I wish we got to see more of them, but like, that's fine. Elena looks good. I like her outfit. uh, Fran looks good. Even Sheila looks good with her like weird cowboy motif that she has going on. Saya looks fine. I like her little jacket. Um, The opening to the show was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like the music, the visuals, they're so good. This show has so much style. Some of the magic fights are incredible. Um, It's good. There's so much good to this show, but it is completely offset by its writing. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, Which is if you Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't watched this show, I encourage you to watch the first episode and then end it there. I really <laughs> do. The first episode is so good. Like honestly, if the rest of the show had the quality of the first episode, it'd easily be an eight out of ten, nine out of ten for me. Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. some it's it is such a good reflection of like gifted kids and their issues it's like mob psycho right and how gifted children have problems adjusting to regular life sometimes Mm -hmm. and it just dumps on it Mm -hmm. you know i just realized yeah what we never did go back to see elena's mom we didn't we didn't and and i was actually going to mention that because elena is given three rules by her mom which is don't think you're better than everyone, which she doesn't do. Um, run away from danger, which she does constantly, and come visit me. And she doesn't do anything. In fact, they mention that she doesn't visit her mom. And it's really weird because you would imagine that maybe there's something hidden behind there. Maybe there's a reason, but there's not. She never feels bad about it. She never's like, yeah, I should. Even Fran says like, hey, go visit your mom. And she doesn't Mm -hmm. it's it's and like maybe you can say oh it's because elena has no attachment to anyone or anything except herself but she clearly does like she thinks about fran she thinks about her mom she thinks about saya she wears that friendship necklace that saya gave her right like she Mm -hmm. wears it like if she didn't care about saya she would have taken it off but she wears it because she obviously has a connection. In the opening scene, they like in the uh, the opening they like do a little like pinky promise. It doesn't mean anything, but the the show obviously wanted us to think that Elena cared about these people. Mm-hmm. Wow, I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the opposite I had of Gibiate, which is weird because Gibiate is a much worse produced show. Mm-hmm. But like when I talked about Gibiate, I was excited. I was so happy to talk about it. I had a completely different feeling in my chest right now Mm -hmm. right now i just want to like hit things with baseball bats and i know i say that a lot but like this one is out of just anger Mm -hmm. i shouldn't get too mad at fictional media but i I am i think that's normal i think that's important should we do a little sidebar on that i think what feeling angry about media yeah like like i Because there is, like, an argument to be made against us that's like, you know, well, whatever if it's a bad show, you just didn't like it. First, correct. Second, 
No, <laughs> because it's it, it, your your emotional reaction to things. I think should be validated. Um, like you know, this is the kind of thing where I am all for like discussion and you know and position in order to try to help each other understand things. You know, so you know, I I kind of like being in this position right now because. Like truth be told, I'm fucking living right now. Like this, <laughs> oh I know, this I know. show you being love, you... so bad, it, it, ending so bad, I should say, is like it's hilarious to me. I can't really elaborate why, but the more I talk to Grant, the more I can understand how he feels, and the more I can understand how I feel. Um, th- that's why I think it's important to validate that your emotional reaction to something is legitimate. You know, um. That can't be taken away from you. It's it's far too immediate. Um, I just and, realized something. Yeah. Like 90% of our friendship, as long as I've known you, has been one of us finding something ang- angering and the other person just finding it hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the, the amount of times that you've complained about things and I'm just thinking this is fucking <laughs> hilarious and vice versa. Oh. I, it, it's funny. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Um, it's kind of like we're doing the the anime thing, where, or I guess even just the 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 film thing, where someone sees someone else in their eyeball, like the camera sees someone's reflection in someone mm-hmm. else's eyeball. You know, that's just us. <laughs> we're just like <laughs> we're we're just reflecting into each other, um, and somehow that's enjoyable. Um, but yeah, like. Uh, what the fuck was it, I even it, saying? <laughs> it's important to voice your opinions in a discussion, even if it's anger. It's a valid emotion to feel when watching media. Like, yeah, you can feel angry about things being popular because mm-hmm, you're gonna learn something out of it. Yeah, like, you will. And um, I hope that when we're discussing the show and what we dislike, that people can sort of locate where our issues are and understand that it's I. You know, although I believe firmly in subjectivity. Um, that this is not something that we just kind of hate for aesthetic or, you know, um, et cetera reasons, right? This is because we expect more out of the human beings creating this media. Uh, this is because we find it problematic. You know, I know we haven't dropped that word here yet, but it's totally there. Um, remember when the we, we were uh, praising the author for saying like, hey, in the anime, no panty shots. And then we got the deluge of fetish episodes. Wild. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wild, right? Like, like he's like, hey, don't objectify my character with the animation. I'll do it myself with the writing. Yeah, it's so weird um, and uncomfortable. Awesome. And I can externalize this and find it funny. Um, but it's for the same reason you know, knowing that Grant is having such a hard time with it that I will not recommend the rest of this show to anyone else. Um like I, I'm not gonna risk like like, oh, you'll find it funny that it's it goes so bad. No, this isn't I can't like on good conscience make that a uh, recommendation here. I, um, I actually don't know who I could recommend this show to. Like I have a few friends that would like it because they, you know, are just a lover of media and we'd be like oh yeah that episode was trash but what about that part you know they mm-hmm. would they would say they liked the entire show despite hating half the episodes but i still want to recommend it to them mm-hmm. um but episode one totally totally absolutely i would i would i would lie to people and say hey do you want to watch this 30 minute ova mm-hmm. yeah wow isn't that great wow <laughs> so good yeah, man i wish there was more yeah and and this isn't the first show that I thought the first couple episodes were better. One of my one of my all time favorite cult shows is The Rolling Girls, mm-hmm. um, and the first two episodes are phenomenal. The rest of the shows, eh, it's not bad, but it's mm-hmm. not like the it's not the first two episodes, um. But like this show, I would only recommend the first episode. Yeah, yeah, and if you're wondering, like, nah, I'm just curious. Uh, g- give it some thought. <laughs> You know, like, I hope like, you take it, these it, things to heart. Like it's, it's unnatural where this show takes itself. I I have a hard time thinking of a show that goes through more ups and downs. Um, 
like even like you know your dime a dozen bad shonen at least those still have like combat as like the baseline and so when you have like a a non-combat filler episode that goes nowhere it's like well that probably wasn't meant to be there because it was you know it was padding you know manga and anime is hard to make and so therefore when one is waiting on the other or you know or we're just having issues maybe we're just kind of stuck with the story then yeah you might pad and then that's going to feel unnatural but you can detect it i don't know what motivated the writer of elena to write it this way i i so the writer of uh elena is a guy, a person by the name of uh, Joji Shirashi. I know we talked a little bit about them in the first one, um, but this is basically all they've done. They did another manga called uh, Riviri to Inori no Kuni. Um, it has like no like following whatsoever. Um, I think I think uh, Majo no Tabi Tabi is probably the one that people mostly go for um but like he 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 doesn't seem to have a lot of things going for him Mm -hmm. in terms of like like uh experience Mm -hmm. right um and it, it really feels like someone's first uh, like novel or creative writing thing like there's there's times you know i look back at some of the stuff that i used to write in high school um and i'm like yikes that was bad why did i include that totally. well that was you know it, it, it feels like someone who did not have an editor or someone look at it and go hey why'd you why'd you include this mm-hmm. or someone to like like and sometimes you just kind of shoot off your shit and you just kind of write in whatever sticks you write, and then you go back and kind of condense it into something a little bit more better. Mm-hmm. Um, it really feels like they just kind of threw ideas out and were like, yep, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Yep, 100%. And, I, I totally agree with that. So it's it, it just seems rough. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that he's totally in the wrong. He wrote episode one mm-hmm. and that's an incredible, I think that's an incredible work of fiction. Mm-hmm. Like he, it, you know, he, he designed Elena, I think, and Elena looks good. You know, mm-hmm. he has talent. Um, like Elena got a figure and it looks good. And if I liked the show, I'd get it because I like the way she looks, but I hate the show and I don't want to support it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would I would I would want him on a writing team, but I would not want him as a main writer. Mm-hmm. I can see I that. Could, I, I I like some of the world building he does. I remember in episode two, I liked about how they had, uh, like the rooftop, like witches landing pads. Mm-hmm. That uh, you know, there's some good stuff in it. It's just it's so separated by, oh, this is a different country. This is a different country. I feel like if he just soft it, like if he just focused on less of a world if he just focused on a country it might have been better i think maybe his scope was too big when designing this character and this world Mm -hmm. that he just had no idea how to keep it from being wildly out of place yeah it's it's strange i really yeah i just don't know what the intent was here as you mentioned like this this show does have a lot of interesting locations to the point where in episode 12 when Elena starts seeing the places she's been before, instantly recognize them. It's just, I was like, oh, like I, I do remember that clock tower from this one, you know? Like I do remember this facade from that and that silhouette from this. Uh, that's pretty impressive because the art style is pretty consistent. You know, it's not like they're drastically different um, architecture styles from place to place. Uh, and so like, you know, kudos uh, to, to everybody involved there. Um, but then it's like the stories contained within that don't seem like they want to have an impact. Very rarely is like a, you know, a judgment cast. Uh, and sometimes when there is, it's really obvious. It's like, well, don't be using magic weapons to do crime. Okay. 
you know, we're not going to explore why people are doing crime. We're not going to explore the tenuous relationship between them. Maybe the light novel did. I don't know, but the anime felt like it wasn't worth putting in. So unfortunately, that's what we're working with. Um, and so it's like, why did you go through the trouble of doing this? Why did you, you know, decide to to keep going and making new places if it was going to require this tax out of your energy and time? And it doesn't amount to a message. It doesn't amount to a theme. It doesn't amount to, you know, a character, really. Um, it, I know I've said this before uh, with Gibiate, uh, but it really does feel like someone is trying to build a D&D world with interesting towns. <laughs> like, like, oh, like, it really reminds me of the first time I ever play, I ever did, made my own D&D campaign. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this town is where the church is, so everyone here is religious. This town is ran by bards, so it's really goofy and silly. This town has deals with vampires. And so it's like every town is outside the cultural influence of the country. Mm -hmm. And that's what it feels like. And I don't think that's a bad way to write it, but when you only spend one one episode there, it, it, it feels inconsistent. Yeah. I want to make a long reach here. Um, I wonder if it has something to do with how um, Japanese story writing focuses on scenarios. Um, I know when I've like seen, uh, you know, Japanese game development talks and things and interviews, um, there are some differences sort of culturally between how things get handled, and I'm not just meaning like. Um, you know, oh, instead of doing like the, you know, beginning, middle, end kind of structure that we look at, or you know, three act structure, um, they'll call that kisho tenketsu, and then that means certain things. You know, um, where more integrated in that is the twist, or you know, so on and so forth. Um, it, you know, I I wonder, seeing like you know, oh, they'll call you know a designer a planner. And that when we are translating things, we don't say, oh, that's what we call game designers. We say, no, that's a that's a different thing. You know, that's this is a different word. I do wonder if the scenario is more at the heart of where, you know, Japanese storytelling lies. Um, again, I'm just reaching at this point. Um, but this has been sitting on my mind for so long because there will be people who are just like scenario writer, you know. Um, and that seems where... Like, that's kind of where the action happens in anime, you know? The scenario is, uh, you know, a, a new Saiyan, you know, comes down, uh, and we're in this particular location, and here's how things are going to play out from here, you know? It is bigger than an event. Um, it's, you know, different from a mission, you know? It's not exactly a quest. It is a scenario, you know? It's mm-hmm. It's something that is sort of being walked into or something walks into them. And um, I have no cohesive way or, or research on why I'm feeling this. I'm just, I'm just going for a reach at this point. Um, It's all right. I think, I I think it's a good reach. I, I, I I had the same exact impression with Elena that you did, that this is focused on like interesting scenarios first and nothing else after, Um, you know, because the scenarios, like you said, like they're, fairly interesting they have thought put into them um but that seems to be where it ends because the rest of it plays out in like a hollow way um you know it feels like this was dreamed up you know in these little blips but then the rest of the work wasn't done to tie them together um (laughs) it, it feels like someone's daydreams that have just sort of been written down and not edited again as you said well, it, it's like, you know, it, it, it like if you wrote down two rival uh, towns have a war on who makes the best wine, you know, that's a fun scenario. Mm-hmm. You know, you make it about a foot fetish, then it's not. But if, if, if that's the basis premise that you write down, you can do a lot with that, mm-hmm. you know, like that it's fun. It's goofy, um, but it's it can be fun. I think that... This show, this show just lacks the characters to make the the context interesting. Yeah, and 
and it doesn't lack the character designs. I know I've mentioned it. Mm -hmm. It just, it it lacks so much of the important character relationships and character development and character arcs that it's just constant disappointment. Yeah. And in their defense, this is the hardest stuff, you know, of all the things to miss out on. This is, this makes sense, but it's disappointing because we do get to see one episode where everything did play through where it was very intimately involved in its scenario and wrapped the conclusion up. Um, Mm -hmm. Hence why I feel comfortable recommending just that episode and none other. Yep. You know, yeah. It's one of those things where it's really unfortunate when you can see the talent of the writer, Mm -hmm. like, come out. Yeah. But... You, you, it just is not realized in later stuff. Yeah, um, it's sad. Like I wonder, you know what? We've I've been playing a pretty critical tone so far. I want to flip this. I I wonder if this show didn't congeal, and that wasn't intended, and that there's actually a you know a, a bad feelings from the author too. Um, because you look at the first episode, and you know this this prelude to the show is you know, speaking very directly and very, like, delicately about a hard topic. Uh, We have Elena, who is a a gifted magician, you know, who is accelerating into the world, and that's kind of a, you know, a a precipitous place to be in. Um, And we have Fran, who is a talented magician, who is, you know, tasked with raising and taking care of Elena and ultimately, you know, doesn't know quite how to do that outside of her element. It's not, you know, what she's used to. And so you have this, like, really open and, like, honest picture at, you know, this really big fumble, you know, that, you know, Elena has to come to terms with the fact that she's pushing herself so hard and doesn't know how to deal with adults yet. And, you know, Fran has to come to terms with the fact that, you know, she doesn't really know how to deal with children yet either. Um, Fran gets that realized through eventually, you know, becoming a teacher. Uh, I'd imagine that there was some intent that Elena's experience with her led her to go do that, because that's a chronological thing we can guarantee. We can bank on that uh, because of the age difference there. But then we don't get to see Elena have that same change. Um, It all gets directed into her having adventures to different places. And, you know, difference is what's emphasized. Not that, like, meaningful return on investment. Mm -hmm. Nope, I I can't disagree. It makes tons of sense. I think this show is... I think the show kind of like symbolizes why light novels kind of end up the same way every time, right? Mm-hmm. You have a lot of writing that you're trying to condense into a 12 to 22 minute show, depending on what we see in here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I have said it. I, I don't think light, I don't think light, I don't think light novels make good anime. I, I'm not saying that all light novel anime are bad. I know, uh, you like Dorarara, and I'm sure if I go back and look at all the shows I've seen, I'm sure one of them is a light novel that I liked. Mm-hmm. But I just think it's such a hard uh, adaptation. Mm-hmm. Um, and like this show got this sh- show got a, a a dub right, and it 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 you know it's liked, and I'm sure it's gonna get a second season. I I do not doubt it. It's licensed by Funimation. Um, and it has a lot of stuff with it, um, but man, hell, the the animation director and the direct the the director of the show is the animation director of like Gunbuster, Giant Robo, um, like, uh, it, it he's the storyboard director of uh Mongolian Chop Squad of Beck, mm-hmm. like he 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 has done work. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, he did, he's the animation director of Nadia the Secret of Blue Water. Like, this guy is talented. Mm-hmm. Um, but damn. The, okay, so here, here's, here's an interesting thing. So the, the, anim, the animation, uh, the, the, the animation writer, the anime writer 
is not the person who wrote the oh god delight novel yeah oh boy oh god it all makes sense well um, don't pump the brakes a little bit oh um, i'm pumping the brakes i i did see a thread where someone was like episode 12 you know shouldn't have happened this way because here's how it happens in the light novel and i read what happens like i, I kind of skimmed over it i hadn't seen episode 12 yet actually so i couldn't really confirm like yeah that did or didn't happen but all the stuff that i thought would have been too stupid to include in the show um ended up in there anyways so like the whole yeah, violent fair. elena thing that was still there so like it might have ended differently but like I, it's it's not like oh the anime put the fetishes in I don't think so I think that's, that's still maybe in the story it's it's still there but I, the head writer of this show um uh Kazuyuki Furiyasu uh was the head writer for interspecies reviewers was the head writer for uh how not to summon a demon lord oh my uh, god but he's also the head writer of like land of the lustrous and but like also the head writer of monster musume like, this dude did so oh. much, like, etchy, like, near-porn shows. Ooh, uh, that complicates and, and, things. Yeah, um. he, he, also, he also wrote all of Milky Homes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but he also did, like, Claymore, which I know is popular. Like, this guy has a wild... It makes so much sense, because this guy has a wild like array of like near porn shows and land of the lustrous like i <laughs> you know i don't know i i know someone who watched claymore and that was basically the only anime they'd watched like that was normal enough for them that they got through that somehow some way yeah, i don't know like it, it seems like this guy either does really dark shows like, he did Girls' Last Tour. I don't know if you've seen Girls' Last Tour, but it looks like a uh, Hidamari sketch. Is and it? Um, I think I know what it is. It's the, the post-apocalyptic girls, sh- like, where they're just traveling around in a tank. Yes. It's, like, kind of depressing. Like, he did that. It, it, this guy, it makes so much sense, right? Because he's, he's either like, ah, it's, it's monster porn. Or, oh, it's a dark, kind of depressing show. Oh, man, what happens if I do both of them at once? And like to be fair, he only wrote like five of the five of the um, twelve episodes, and he did write the first episode, um, and like he wrote the first five episodes. It looks like he might have wrote the rest of them, and they just haven't put it up on IMBD. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that's that's uh, that's what that's his that's what he's done. So it's like it makes sense. It it totally makes sense why he'd pick this up. Um, it doesn't make it good. I think I think it just kind of sheds a light on what the show was from the beginning. My soul is escaping my body. Yeah, help me catch it, please, please. I it's going it. away. I caught it. Thank you. I caught it. Um. Okay, can you mail that back sometime? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So Here, like, quickly, like... let me dox myself on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and like and like the 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 studio that animated is c2c studio which they haven't done much they used to be kind of a finisher show where they would like do line art and stuff their first uh anime that they did by themselves is Yuramate's 3d which i don't think is supposed to be good Mm -hmm. uh but like they did like uh hattori bochi no marmaru sekatsu which we, we talked about this in the first episode like they have animation chops i think i think they did good for this I don't think the the animation is anything to talk like talk bad about. Mm-hmm. I think the show has a lot going for it. And I think that's why in the end it makes me so pissed. Yeah. Okay, I can't I can't talk I, I don't think I have anything more to say about this show okay. personally. <laughs> yeah, me neither, but I we of course I, I have some hypotheticals we can entertain here at the end. I would love to entertain some hypotheticals. Okay. So congratulations, Grant. Uh you got your wish. Elena has a traveling partner. Hell yeah. It's you. Oh fuck! <laughs> what adventure would you drag her on? <laughs> okay, so, um, I would take her to a homeless shelter and make her volunteer for it, so that she can <laughs> understand how to help people and not get anything in return. Um, for the, for the throat man. <laughs> I, um, it's uh, I would, 
I would I would make her fight uh something way out of her child training too. I know she fought Fran at the first time and got her ass kicked. Um, but she needed to get her ass kicked just a little bit more. Her her ego needed to be knocked down like six pegs. I like to if imagine. I'm traveling with her, am I a witch? Yeah, uh, uh, sure. This is your story. F- I'm gonna fight her. <laughs> I, I, I might lose. I might lose. I know I would lose based off of the context of the show, but I will fight her. This is where the bat comes in. Yeah, I just hit her with the bat. It, it's you just you, yes. you fl- your your broom doubles as a bat, and so you <laughs> you flip it over and. Wah. I would definitely fight her. Um, I don't know. I, I in terms of like, it's it's hard to say what I'd want to take her on because in my mind I'm like I need to make Elena a better person, but obviously <laughs> nothing can make her a better person. <laughs> I like to imagine that like you you meet Elena and you're just kind of chatting about like yeah so so I do this and that like what do you do, and you hear these stories that she's telling you you're just like you did what. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an out of context, like you're just telling us all the shitty things she's done. God, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Would you take her on any quests, Brantley? No, I think. <laughs> that... <laughs> Sorry, that came out more anticlimactic than I meant it to. Um, uh, I, th- I think instead I would like. I would try to to. I don't know. Part, uh, me being me, I'd probably just be like, what do you want to do? And then I'd be like, no, what do you really want to do? And see if we can find something to the heart of that. Um, where it's like, you've been traveling around, but is that actually what you want? Or is that just what you're aspiring to? Um, you know, and 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 then maybe like just, just work that out. But then again, at that point, I'm just like playing myself into like a therapy situation. Um and that's probably not a good idea since I am not a licensed therapist. Um, <laughs> oh man, uh, you know i I did consider uh, you know psychology at one point, and uh, my parents were like, "Now, Brantley, you know, like you can't fix everything you come in contact with." And then I, I kind of like. Uh, dissociated for about an hour and then after I got out of that I was like yeah that's true <laughs> I should probably not do this I don't know if you'd be more insufferable being a psychologist or less insufferable being a psychologist <laughs> uh, just like there's Elena and violent Elena there's Brantley and psychologist Brantley so sorry I... guys you got the boring version of me <laughs> you got protagonist oh, Brantley I, I would drop anything to talk to you for an hour and a half on anime in fact I did to do it tonight <laughs> yeah um so to top things off um what is your elevator pitch to tell someone to stop watching after they've seen the first episode so essentially this is your time to actually make the episode one recommendation what's your elevator All right. pitch so so this is this is um something we talked about doing uh but we decided against it because we wanted to just trash on the show um i told them to watch little witch academia instead <laughs> I, I would. I would. I'd be like, if you want more of this shit, if you want more of this shit, Little Witch Academia does this shit. Um, I know Little Witch Academia actually does not have, like, it's good. Like, I love it. I think it's incredible. I think it's one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, but it, I mean, it has a 7.92 on my anime list, so it's it's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. But th- that show has, it has both the I'm not gifted and I work really hard and I still don't reach my potential. It has the gifted student who is uh, trying too hard to fit in. Uh, It has uh, great characters. It has good magic. It is fun. It is charming and it will make you emotional. I would be like, hey, if you want to watch more of this shit, if you want more of the first episode, go watch Little Witch Academia. It has a character that I think almost everybody can relate to one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a great mentor-mentee relationship. It is beautifully animated. It doesn't have any, like, as far as I remember, any horny parts. Mm-hmm. There's um, one that you could kind of suggest as being like that, but that's about it. I, I it is It is overall this show, but better. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not that old too it's like 2017 2017 adaptation. yeah i think i think that that would be my pitch i would be like 
if you liked this, watch Little Witch. Um, <laughs> if you if, liked if this, you... don't. <laughs> <laughs> I I would be like, hey, if you didn't like this and you want to just see weird shit, sure. But I I would basically say the the rest of the show will never reach the quality of the first episode, mm-hmm. and it won't even come close. Mm-hmm. I not even close. Do you think that'd be my out actual there? pitch? <laughs> Do you think there's someone out there who's like, man, fuck that first episode. Now, episode um, two onward, I, that's my shit. Let me, I, I'm actually going to see if I can, uh, uh, cause I know you can, I know somewhere you can see, uh, episodes by their ranking. Oh. Um, so I know Reddit has one. Yeah. Uh, but I also know that they really liked the show in general. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, uh, on Reddit, Oh, that makes me sick. Okay, never mind. So on Reddit, they have uh, they have a vote system where you can rate it one through five, um, and two hundred fifteen people voted on the first episode and gave it an excellent, a five out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, only f- point, only one person rated it a bad. Two people rated it mediocre. Six people rated it good. Thirty six people rated it great, and one hundred seventy people rated this excellent. Mm-hmm. So like episode one is the most highest rated. Mm-hmm. Do you want to guess what the second highest rated is, Brantley? Is it episode nine? It's episode nine with three hundred and fifty nine ratings for excellent. Oh, but its second is eighteen rates with bad. I cannot believe it. Ha- it has more votes than the first one and a lower average score. But damn. Uh, episode eight is the least liked show episode, which I believe is the the Ripper, which is weird. That that's not weird that the Foot Fetish episode has a higher rating than that. What am I fucking saying? It's goddamn Reddit. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, we can kind of rule out ever using Reddit's opinions for our opinions. Um. <laughs> Wild. Uh, Wild. And you know, how do you I know even what? respond to that? What? Uh, how do I even respond to that? Like, I and, and know, you know but fuck. It, it, it's one of those things where you understand why people love it, because people love to, like, oh, dark shit that are like, whoa, I can't believe it. People it love really fucking Mirai there. Nikki. You know, like, they love Future Diary. They love it. I can't tell you when I used to browse Imgur, Imager, whatever you want to call it, like, every week someone would be like, a top 10 anime list you need to watch. And uh, besides the, the the repeats of, like, Cowboy Bebop, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Tekkon Kinkri, every now and then Future Diary would sneak in there. And I was like, all right, I'll bite. Awful. Trash. I can't believe it. Um, they pull a Scrappy Doo ending, and it's a game about murder. <laughs> like that, that's I mean, it's a it's a show about a murder game. Like it's a death game, um, and they literally have like the mascot character try to take godhood at the end, and Hell become yeah. like the god of death. Hell yeah! It's some dumb shit. Yeah, man, I I get why people would like it. I can I can you know I I went to the the comments and they're basically all like, "Whoa, I can't believe it went there." But it didn't really go anywhere because it's an episodic show where nothing actually matters. Yeah, also, you didn't know? they, like, fuck up their own, like, like time rules? Because they were like, now, remember, when we leave here, this these events won't be changed, you know? Like, it's it's a different timeline. And so, like, when we come back to our time, then we're living in the same world as it was before. She's like, no, it's just going to make me feel better. So then how did she, like, remain dead when they came back because that's what happened because, right because magic she she her actual present body went back in time i think i i don't know i don't know man i'm done talking about this show <laughs> okay well do you have any final thoughts no nah, we'll just we'll be on to a new thing soon enough um all right yeah, coming up ahead, we are gonna finish up Princess Tutu. I'm hoping which that, I'm excited for. Yeah, I hope you 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 know get a favorable note at the end of that, because um, that's our other half and half right now that we've done for episodes. Um, 
And hey, uh, in, in some upcoming time, we may have a few extra things to sprinkle in here. Not full-on reviews, but um, some extra fun content uh, that we can recycle. I mean, I mean uh, include. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's all I got. Well, thank you for watching this incredibly angry review of <laughs> Journey of Elena. If you liked the show, like, it's fine. You're You're entitled to your own opinion. I just am angry at the the amount of disappointment that i've received but if you liked listening to me angrily rant about uh an anime uh please like rate comment subscribe do whatever or not we're not your dads 